This is a social experiment. It's a story of two can openers. One is as old as three decades, whilst the other is less. The older can opener became a bit blunt because of overuse, of course, which made the owner get the newer alternative. So in the next five seconds, can you quickly guess which can opener is new and which one is old? Okay, let me save you from the dilemma. The rusty one on the right is the new can opener that was bought less than three years ago. These two apparatuses were kept in the same kitchen cabinet and were used by the same people. But hell no, as you can see this new opener has lost its sharpness, aesthetics and good performance. The old one still does the job much better. So yeah, I would go ahead and throw this more expensive and newer opener into the bin because its watch has ended. Oh, end of experiment. Okay, this example might look somehow petty and insignificant, but this is the reality we currently live in, and it goes far beyond kitchen stuff. I could say the same for garden tools, fashions, furniture, cars, and so much more. The list is practically endless. See, the truth is that it's becoming increasingly difficult to find long-lasting, high-quality products again. And yes, you're not going crazy. It's no coincidence that you think everything we buy now is trash. Absolute nonsense. You're right, we're right, and literally everyone can see it. Wait a minute, well, why do you think your mobile phone suddenly breaks down and stops working just a few months after you buy it? Why is the warranty period gradually getting shorter? These things are not coincidences, I promise you. It's far beyond what catches the eye. But to be honest, this is very ironic. Technology is progressing, which means that manufacturing processes should become cheaper, safer, faster, and more accurate. So what is happening? And more importantly, why is it happening? Why is the quality of goods produced nowadays worse than what we had years ago, despite industrial equipment and technology becoming more advanced daily? They're expensive, but of terrible quality. What is happening? Listen, the answer is planned obsolescence. And to put this into perspective of how deep this has eaten into us, it's become a common business model among several manufacturers. Yeah. It is precisely what you're thinking. For almost a century, manufacturing companies have intentionally designed products to fail so they can produce and sell more, and more, and more, basically ensuring the buying cycle never ends. In the simplest terms, planned obsolescence is a manufacturing strategy that involves designing products to have a limited lifespan, creating a constant demand for better and newer versions of the same products, and leading to more profits for the manufacturer. See it this way, if things are made too good and durable, then people won't buy a new one for a very long time, sometimes never. Now ask yourself, how would these manufacturers profit in the long run? No one loves a one-time customer, right? So yes, it applies here too. Let's put this into perspective. Imagine a manufacturer producing 5 million units of item X per year, and up to 50 million people want to buy this item. It means in 10 years, everyone who wanted to buy item X would have gotten it. And if X had excellent quality and lasts for about 40 years, it means there would be no demand for the product until the next 40 years. Now let's look at things on the flip side. If the manufacturer lowers the quality of X to 10 years, do you know what that means? Before everyone who needs the product gets it, people who got it first would have been in the market looking to buy again. Now imagine if X had been so crappy that it could only last five years. What about three? Perhaps even two years? Six months? Buy, throw away, buy a new one, throw away again, buy another one, and the cycle continues to grow. It just never ends. Historically, planned obsolescence actually began with the light bulb about 30 years after its invention. The light bulb was a perfect invention, a brilliant design with unimaginable durability. Light bulbs could operate for almost 2,500 hours in the early days. However, this longevity kept the business model at risk of extinction as there wasn't enough demand to sustain the cost of obtaining new raw materials, paying workers, and so on. And the manufacturers saw this, returned to the drawing table, and decided, nah, we have to reduce the lifespan of this mother before it takes us out of the market. So, they shorten the lifespan of bulbs, which is why your three-month-old bulb has just melted, and now you need to change them like you did some months ago. For these manufacturers, it means more short and long-term profits. I mean, people are always buying. However, we the consumers are at the receiving end. The cost we pay is more than the benefits we enjoy. But beyond this, there is a far greater victim of this planned obsolescence. The environment. The more the manufacturers produce, 
the more resources they use, ultimately increasing the waste they generate. Yeah, that's what the ripple effect does. Now, there are two main types of planned obsolescence, the programmed obsolescence and the perceived obsolescence. Have you ever tried to update your smartphone and it says the new version is no longer compatible with your device and the only solution is to buy a replacement? Well, that right there is what we call programmed obsolescence. It's basically the manufacturer's way to force their consumers to purchase new products and abandon the ones they're currently using. These guys rarely have control over their hardware. So in this case, their primary focus is the software where they already included built-in obsolescence. Your smartphone, for example, works very well. You can send text messages, make calls, and explore various applications without any hindrances. But the minute you upgrade the OS, you'll discover that your phone cannot handle it at all and you'll need to change it. These companies do it deliberately. A computer science professor at Arizona State University, Yinon Cheng, considers this a violation of an engineer's code of ethics and is even against consumer rights. But perceived obsolescence is even worse. It toys with your mind and usually renders you helpless, with the only solution being to play to their tunes. So how does it all work? See this as clever marketing. You see, these manufacturers do not need you to be dissatisfied with their products or wait for them to get damaged before replacing them. Perceived obsolescence involves creating some form of FOMO for a newer and more shiny alternative of a product, messing with human psychology and making these consumers long to get the new option. The rapid rise of social media and user-generated content makes this much easier to achieve. See, we aren't diving deep into these concepts in this video, so let's not lose the point. However, we have discussed more about the fear of missing out that manufacturers repeatedly create, making consumers abandon their current gadgets and hop on the newest and latest train. Click on the video on your screen to watch it now. So yeah, back to the crust of planned obsolescence. If you ask me, this is entirely illegal and should be a criminal offence punishable by the law. Imagine a medical doctor who wouldn't keep to the Hippocratic Oath, but instead administers treatments on his patients that ensure they keep returning to his office for even more treatment so he can make more and more money. That sounds outrightly ridiculous, right? Well, this is precisely the situation we're faced with right now. That is what these companies are doing to consumers. Now, to be fair, obsolescence can be somehow categorized as a natural process. I mean, technological advancements will make older products go out of fashion and use, making them obsolete. However, it becomes illegal when it's planned. And what these guys are doing is far beyond planning to make a product obsolete. The newer alternatives they provide are made with less efficiency and a lower lifespan. This means the older version was designed to last longer than the current version, and the next update wouldn't last as long as the current one. While you agree with me, a few other countries worldwide also agree that this is not only unethical but also illegal, especially in France. In France, it's actually criminal to intentionally shorten the lifespan of a product because you want your customers to replace it quickly. But of course, they didn't just get there in a day. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane to uncover how this happened. In late 2017, a young activist in France, Letitia Vasseur, filed a lawsuit against Apple claiming that the iPhone manufacturers were deliberately slowing down older versions of the phone to encourage early replacements. The facts are clear, there was no hiding for Apple, and boy did they lose the lawsuit. Now, the victory goes beyond the monetary penalty of just $27 million, less than what Apple makes in three hours. Apple had to put a statement on its website for one whole month admitting that it committed a crime of deceptive commercial practice. Apart from France, Portugal is another country that has sued Apple for this supposedly deceptive commercial practice, and where the manufacturing company lost. This happened back in 2021. Now, Apple isn't the only company taking the hit. As a matter of fact, planned obsolescence occurs across all industries, although gadgets have been leading the pack for quite some time now, which is, of course, for seemingly obvious reasons. Printer cartridges are another perfect example. Light sensors, microchips, batteries, and so on can cause a cartridge to malfunction whether or not its ink has been used up, leaving the owner with no option but to buy an entirely new one. Is there any reason for this? I bet no one knows, or do you? Beyond the cost of implications on customers, just like the other examples of planned obsolescence, this is also wasteful. For instance, in North America alone, at least 350 million cartridges are deposited yearly in landfills. And the terrible part? Most of those cartridges aren't even empty. They just became redundant and unusable for their owners. An absolute waste. 
Finally, again, we'll return to the role as we, as consumers, play in the grand scheme of things. To a considerable extent, we are dependent on the products these manufacturers agree to sell. However, at the same time, most of these guys no longer sell any tools, components, or diagnostics, which makes it very difficult to fix. And for fixable ones, the costs are usually overboard and not recommended. And beyond tech-based products, this concept applies across the board, including in fashion. You'll probably be shocked to learn how many items you own that you can actually repair when they get damaged. And yes, they would get damaged soon, sooner than you expect. But then again, you don't have to feel bad about participating in the system because honestly, most of these aspects are actually beyond our control. Like several other people, we've been somewhat conditioned to think and act like it. And there is very little to what we can do about it, of course, apart from fighting for the right to repair. A petition actually making rounds recently. On the flip side, undoubtedly, we are not completely vulnerable to planned obsolescence. So how exactly can we fight and ultimately protect ourselves against this criminal act as consumers? See, first, we need to start consuming more responsibly. Do not buy what you don't need at the moment. Understandably, this might be somewhat tough because of the fear of inflation and price increases. But you might also want to think that this is a FOMO created by manufacturers so that you can buy them quickly and lose them even more rapidly. Being a responsible consumer also helps to extend the useful life of our products. Religiously embrace a maintenance culture and you can be one leg out of the muddy waters. Secondly, try not to discard anything you can reuse or repair. Regardless of how terrible a product may be designed, repair might be feasible. You might just need to look in the right places. Recycling exists for a reason too, and practically all elements of an item can be recycled. So yeah, it's a win-win situation, especially for the environment that we're saving from avoidable waste. France and Portugal, as I mentioned earlier, have labelled plan obsolescence as a crime. Germany has also followed suit, recently introducing a new law that requires all cell phones to last at least seven years. More and more countries and their citizens are also joining forces to ensure product durability and save us from the hands of these manufacturers who are only driven by their pockets and their pockets alone. Ultimately, we hope these reforms and approaches help us achieve the fundamentals of changing how we design, produce, and even consume these products. But the big question is, is this actually achievable? And if yes, when exactly will we achieve it? I'd love to hear your thoughts about these possibilities. Don't hesitate to share them with us via the comment section below and trust me to respond as quickly as possible. While you're at it, you can also check out more videos like this one on the channel, Declassified, where we go beyond the headlines to uncover the hidden truths that have escaped the mainstream narrative for decades. Do well to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you'll be among the first to know when we publish next. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you in the next one. Bye for now.